It's 5 a.m. and this is WKYT This Morning. Police had to break a car window to stop a driver from leaving the scene of an overnight crash that happened in Lexington. We'll have details of the crash just ahead this morning. Donald Trump is overhauling his campaign again just months before the election. We'll have the latest on that shakeup ahead this morning. And Lexington Catholic High School is facing multiple lawsuits from former students. More on the discrimination those students say they faced. That and your weather forecast ahead on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and it's so good to have you with us on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. Here we are. It is Wednesday, August 17th. Lots of school bells ringing. Lots of folks up and at it this morning getting ready to go to work and other things. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris and see what the weather holds. Well, we got first day back in school for Corbin Independent and also sitting there in Clark County. So good luck to you guys, teachers, parents. All the kiddos are probably not awake yet, but they're about to get there. And we have some storms on the way. These storms Storms won't affect those areas as you're heading off the school, but they are going to affect some regions, especially back toward the west here in the next hour, hour and a half as you see it roll up the BG Parkway. That's some heavy rain right there, so we just got to keep that in mind as we're about to head off to the bus stop here in about an hour and a half to two hours. More storms are on the way today. It's on and off pretty much throughout your day. I'm going to show you how much rain I expect, and also when we get a break from the rain, when that cooler air starts arriving. I'll have that coming up in a few minutes. Okay, let's get right to the news. New this morning, a man was was taken to the hospital overnight after Lexington police say he crashed into a building on Sir Barton Way. And police say the man appeared to be under the influence of something. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is live with what we know at this moment. Caitlin, good morning. Good morning, Bill. It was definitely an eventful morning in the Hamburg area along Sir Barton Way for Lexington police. They say they spotted a man parked up on the sideway. They went out to talk with him, and that's when they say he tried to make a getaway. Now, the man whose name we don't know right now. Police say started driving erratically the wrong way down Sir Barton Way, which sits between Winchester Road and Manowar Boulevard. Now, police say they didn't chase him, but did follow him until he crashed into an office building. That's where police got out of their cruisers and had to bust through the driver's side window to keep him from going any further. Now, you can see the damage done, pretty minor damage. Police Police believe the man was under the influence of something, but there's still some we don't know. Right now, we don't know the man's name, and we're working to figure out what charges he'll face. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. All right, Caitlin, thank you. Still some questions there, obviously. And also new this morning, Republican Donald Trump is overhauling his campaign once again. He is bringing in Britbart News' Stephen Bannon as his campaign CEO. And he is promoting pollster Kellyanne Conway to campaign manager. This move comes just 82 days before the election. Opinion surveys show Trump trailing his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton nationally and in key battleground states. Trump says his campaign Chair Paul Manafort will keep his current role. The shakeup is the second in Trump's campaign. Two months ago, Trump fired his campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Former Lexington High School Catholic, uh, Catholic High School students are suing the school. They're claiming discrimination has been going on there for years. Our Sean Moody is at our alert desk with more on the lawsuits. Sean? Bill, these complaints in these lawsuits allege that a white female student was sexually harassed and two black male students were racially harassed. These allegations go all the way back to 2013. Now, according to the lawsuit, an unnamed student said she was sexually harassed for three semesters before withdrawing from Lexington Catholic. The suit says there were, quote, vicious and slanderous lies being told about her purported sexual behavior and that school leaders denied her access to officials and recourse. The other two students who filed lawsuits say they were harassed because they were black and that racial bullying went, quote, unchecked by Lexington and Catholic. One student said he was bullied at football camp and got text messages saying things like, I'm going to lynch you. The other student said he was repeatedly called the N-word. The attorney for the student says he wants justice for them and for the school to admit wrongdoing. WKYT asked Lexington Catholic officials for their response to this lawsuit. The school's vice president for advancement said he was aware of the lawsuit but does not comment on legal matters. Bill, back to you.
All right, Sean Moody, thank you. Today, attorneys are expected to make their closing arguments in a Lexington murder trial. In 2014, police charged Paris Charles with the murder of his girlfriend, Goldia Massey. They say a few weeks after she was reported missing, some of Massey's body parts washed up along the Kentucky River in Jessamine and Henry counties. In addition to murder, Charles is charged with abuse of a corpse. Friends of a Powell County Marine want to make sure that his memory lives on for years. Years to come. Tyler Brewer died in a car crash in Powell County in January of last year. Now his friends want to have a water fountain built in Stanton's City Park that will be a memorial to him. Whether somebody's just walking their dog or just walking themselves, like either way, they're going to be able to stop and get refreshed. And if anything, Tyler was refreshing. But Brewer's friends say they need help in making that memorial happen. They say the city has agreed to cover the installation costs, but $3,500 is still needed to pay for the fountain. For more information on how you can donate to this cause, you can go to WKYT.com. An Eastern Kentucky restaurant is raising money to help the family of a murder victim. Police say Robert Jones and his girlfriend, Crystal Warner, were both killed last month. Police have made an arrest in the case. Warner's body has still not been found, but Jones's body was found in Clark County. His family lives in Letcher County. And the Pizza Hut in Whitesburg donated part of its sales yesterday to his family. Friends say they're grateful for fundraisers like that one. The family is needing the help right now because we're still looking for Crystal. I mean, the family ain't going to stop and the friends ain't going to stop until Crystal's found too. So the travel and the hard, hard times going on trying to travel and find things and stuff. So the fundraisers have been absolutely amazing. The restaurant is including a portion of its online sales in its donation as well. A Lexington restaurant has a mess to clean up this morning after a car crashed into the building. That happened about 4.30 yesterday afternoon at a Vietnamese restaurant in the Woodhill Shopping Center. No one was injured, and people at the restaurant say only one person was inside at the time. Police are not sure what caused the car to crash into the restaurant. The death toll from historic flooding in Louisiana has now reached 10. State leaders say the latest deaths are drownings. Louisiana's governor says at least 40,000 homes have water damage, many of them in the Baton Rouge and Lafayette areas. Cities downstream are still preparing for high water. Two Red Cross volunteers left Lexington yesterday to join the hundreds of others who are helping out flood victims in Louisiana. Conservative political commentator John McLaughlin has died. He was the host of the long-running syndicated TV show, The McLaughlin Group. That show debuted back in 1982. McLaughlin, who had never missed a show in those years, was 89 years old. Lexington city leaders will consider making changes to the permitting process for special events. It comes after the Luke Bryan concert out at Talon Winery last fall, which caused massive traffic backups on Tates Creek Road. The winery was allowed to have the concert because a planning ruling allows wineries to have special events without alerting city leaders. Well, according to our news partners at the Herald Leader, city leaders are now looking at a proposal that would require a permit for any event that would draw at least 50 people and would require at least two city services. Any event that uses city streets or sidewalks would also need a permit as well. Today, a new landmark will be dedicated at Eastern Kentucky University, and it will mark the start of a new tradition. The dedication ceremony for EKU's new Turner Gate will start at 6 o'clock this evening. The new Turner Gate is named in honor of current Board of Regents Chair Craig Turner and his wife. It's located across from the intersection of Lancaster Avenue and Barnes Mill Road. At 7 o'clock, EKU's freshman class will march through the gate as part of their welcome walk. That's to begin a campus tradition. Classes begin at EKU on Monday, and Richmond is livening up as a result. We have an update for you this morning about a dog that was rescued from a trail in Powell County. Powell County Search and Rescue says that German Shepherd named Axel suffered heat exhaustion while walking with his owner on Sunday and fell down an embankment. Some other hikers helped carry the dog three miles to safety. Powell County Search and Rescue says the owner told them Axel is now at home and appears to have fully recovered. All right, Axel, you go. Don't overdo it next time. Coming up, WKYT this morning with a lot more news on your Wednesday. A few superheroes took time to surprise kids at the hospital. More on their dramatic entrance. We're eager to see that when we come back this morning. 
and Home Depot's record sales, big savings on gasoline, and Snapchat may be expanding. Those stories are ahead in today's Money Watch report. We're looking at already some heavy rain in the forecast back toward the west, heading northeast, and that's not the only batch of rain we're going to be dealing with today. I'm going to show you how to plan out your day. Coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. If you're sitting over in eastern Kentucky, I see absolutely no problem whatsoever. Now, if you're back toward the west, in our western areas, E Town is about to, well, it's actually being swallowed by some rain right now, and you can see that. Uh, glistening off of the roadways, and that's just going to be a nasty go at it. If you're about to head down the BG Parkway toward E Town, just know this you're going to be running into some pretty heavy rain. That's Bardstown, that's work your way toward Lawrenceburg. Lawrenceburg, it's about another hour, hour 15 away from you guys. Uh, Louisville, if you're heading that direction across 64, I would say it was 64 corridors, another hour, hour and a half. Uh, but you can see it's just uh, pretty dry right now, except for that area. So 65 corridors, really, really wet if you're heading in that direction. Louisville picking up on some of that rain. The 64 corridor in Shelby County actually picking up on that right now. Now, the heaviest rain is still back toward the southwest of you guys. So the heaviest bout of rain, not just rain in general, but the heaviest, actually comes here in just about an hour. So heads up Bardstown, heads up Lawrenceburg. It's coming your direction. Frankfurt, you will be swallowed in on this here in about an hour. Already seeing some sprinkles, some light showers back toward the west of you guys. But some pretty heavy rain is on the way. Now, Lexington, as of right now, I don't see it hitting us. But it possibly, depending on what it, it does to the south of that, could possibly clip us. We'll see. That would be in the next hour to two. 80 degrees by the afternoon. That's not all that bad. The problem is it's not because of cool air. It's because of the rain. It's going to be on and off pretty much all day. You will get some breaks, but nonetheless, you will get some rain as well. Especially central, north, and western zones, that's the best bet. Still southeast, I'd give it about a 40-50% uh, chance, but really the western zone is about an 80% chance. So it really depends on where you are. And let me walk you through it hour by hour and towards your day tomorrow, because you already see it's on and off all day long today. Here's Thursday. Most of this activity Thursday stays in the southern zones. It's really that I-64 corridor south. You see that by 4 p.m. Now, it's not completely Complete, uh, not a complete washout, but you will get some thunderstorms that will put down some pretty heavy rain. As of right now, I would say the flash flooding concern, which is relatively low, is going to be more today than, say, tomorrow or Friday. Friday's bits and pieces here and there. If you have any plans, I'd say stick to them, but no, you might have to plan around some of that rain. And then we head off through your weekend. Weekend, 40% chance on both Saturday and Sunday, but these temperatures are dropping off steadily. Look at Monday and Tuesday, fantastic weather, upper 70s for highs. Not because of rain, because of cooler air. Absolutely love the brand of air that's coming our direction. Looks good. Love it. We'll All right. It, we'll <laughs> Particularly it. after the weekend. Looks that's really, right. really good. Micah, thank you so much. Our time this morning is 5.15. A few superheroes teamed up for the most important mission of the year, putting smiles on kids' faces. Hey, check this out. The four window washers transformed into Batman, Captain America, Spider-Man, and Superman. They then rappelled down the site of Penn State Children's Hospital, surprising some young patients there. This is the third year in a row that they visited the hospital. Hospital employees say it really does brighten the kids' days, and it's definitely something they'll be talking about for a long time to come. They remember when those superheroes came by. All right, and the parents had some good times, too, taking uh, pictures there. Good deeds, for sure. Good to have you with us on WKYT this morning. We're coming right back with your top stories in just a few minutes, and a look at your money is on the way next. A major home improvement retailer is building on its profits, and a popular messaging app could get into the online search business. I'm Marley Hall, and I'll have those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. Good morning to you on your Wednesday. It's 520 right now. Record sales for Home Depot and Snapchat may be expanding. Marley Hall has the latest on your money. 
Home Depot reported record sales last quarter. The home improvement retailer says profits jumped 9% in the second quarter. The growth was led by appliance sales, which saw double-digit percentage increases. Wall Street closed in negative territory Tuesday. The Dow lost 84 points. The Nasdaq dropped 34. American drivers have saved more than $38 billion on their gasoline bills so far this year. That's according to GasBuddy.com. The website says prices at the pump are likely to fall each month for the rest of 2016. Snapchat is reportedly acquiring mobile search app Verb for more than $100 million. That's according to tech website The Information. No word yet if Snapchat will keep the Verb app separate or integrate the app search tools directly into the popular messaging application. That's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Marley Hall. Well, for the first time in nearly 15 years, shopping is once again a part of New York's World Trade Center. The Westfield World Trade Center Mall opened its doors to the public yesterday. Visitors were treated to a concert by former Hamilton actor Leslie Odom, Jr. Sixty shops and restaurants have already opened at the mall, including an Apple store, Kate Spade, a Shake Shack, and an Under Armour place there. Mall officials say more than 100 stores should be open in time for Christmas shopping. And there are direct flights from Lexington up there, so some folks might want to go check that out. And our time this morning is 521. Coming up, we'll have a lot more news, and sports is on the way next. Eddie Grand says there's a certain play situation that his offense must complete 100% of the time. And a former Wildcat gets her own billboard in Lexington. We'll tell you why next in sports. Seeing a bulk of the rain back toward I-65 corridor that will roll right into the BG Parkway here very shortly. Already seeing that at the start of it, the interchange of 65 and the BG Parkway. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris. I want to get you updated on traveling concerns heading down the BG Parkway. 62 rolling through Anderson and also Nelson counties. Uh, 64 is going to be a wet go at it, especially you're getting some light rain back toward Simpsonville uh, right there in the Outlet Mall area. But the heaviest rain is actually on its way, so it's still not there yet. I'd say another hour or so. But 62 is going to be really wet. A lot of location. Bloomfield, Bardstown, uh, go off into, say, Taylorsville. Those are areas that's really going to get some heavy rain here within the hour. So some rain this morning, noontime. It's, remember, it's on and off pretty much all day long with more storms later on this afternoon. And some heavy downpours will be our main concern once again today. Let's check out sports and see what's going on. On Tuesday, for the first time since Saturday's scrimmage, we got a chance to talk with UK offensive coaches and players. Now, the head coach of the offense, Eddie Grant, said that he was pleased with how his guys performed on Saturday. That includes quarterback Drew Barker and UK's offensive playmakers. Grant said Barker made good reads, the receivers caught the ball well, and the running backs ran well. Good enough, right? Grant said that his team still, though, needs to work in short yardage situations. I was a little disappointed in our third and short stuff. We had to go for it on fourth down six times, but we were uh, five of six on fourth down. So that was encouraging because we always talk about recovering. We always talk about going on to the next play. We were in that part of the field where we could go for it, uh, and we executed. So there was positives of that, but we can't not get a third and one. That's ridiculous. We have to be 100% on that. Sounds good to me. Meanwhile, EKU has a new coaching staff and 40 new players on the roster. Head coach Mark Elder has plenty of decisions to make when it comes to choosing starters at every position, but he doesn't sound like a guy who's in any sort of hurry to get those starters named. I'm really hoping by midday on September 3rd we'll have a, a starter at every position. That's, that's the goal right now. And, and the other part is, is we will find roles for every guy that can play at a high enough level for us to win. So um, they're all competing, they're all trying hard, but at the same time they know, hey, I'm working my tail off because even if I am a two, I can find a role to, to help us on Saturdays and win. Well, she missed her shot at the Olympics, but UK All-American Kendra Harrison has received a very nice recognition from UK. Quickly, let's take you back in time to July the 22nd in London when Harrison set a new world's record in the 100 meter hurdles once the time had been adjusted, it was a consolation prize, of course, but some sort of prize it was. And then yesterday, a billboard was unveiled along, along New Circle Road in Old Frankfurt Pike. It shows Harrison's world record time of 12.20 seconds. So, kids, if you're watching and you want to get your own billboard, all you have to do 
just break a world record. That's Luke Good Morning Sports. Have a great Wednesday.